Hey everyone. It's still summer, uh, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, but uh, the summer is kind of be beginning to wind down. We have about one month or so of real summer left before things start getting uh, kind of cool, uh, temperature-wise. So uh, I thought, let's, let's spend a video doing one of my favorite summertime activities, playing golf. Now, you might associate playing golf with something that old people do, or retired people, or business executives, but it was always my favorite sport. Golf and, and chess, those were the things that I, were really, uh, that I was really into as a kid. I actually play less golf now that I uh, have an office job because I'm busy with my work, but when I was a kid I actually was a fairly enthusiastic golfer because uh, I really like golf. I mean, it's, it's a great game, you know, it's, it's uh, an opportunity to enjoy nature, it's low stress, low impact, and importantly for me, it's something that you can play by yourself. You know, most popular sports are team sports, and you have to have a whole bunch of other people to play them with, which uh, was a resource not available to me when I was a kid, or now as an adult for that matter. So, you know, golf is nice because um, you, you, can, you can play against yourself, you know, you don't have to play with a bunch of people, and you don't really need a lot of equipment. All you really need is a good club and a couple of balls, and you can play with yourself all day. So um, I thought, hey, let's, let's go ahead through, uh, through the history of golf in DOS and just look at some of the seminal uh, great DOS golf games that, uh, that, have, that used to prol proliferate on the PC before golf kind of became a thing of the past because America lost its middle class. So one of the first early golf games that people will remember is Mean 18. Now this was... A great game for its time. Definitely, um, definitely doesn't hold up to the standards of later games, but uh, for when it came out, when did it come out? These files all have the date that I extracted them, not the date that uh, the game was made. I don't remember exactly when this came out. I think this was late 80s. I don't, let's, let's run golf and see what it says. There'll probably be a copyright date somewhere. Um, EJ 16 Colors. Sure, why not? Accolade presents... Mean 18, designed by Rex Bradford, and there is a sun... Okay, I didn't have time to read all that, but that's okay. Insert your course disc and press return to continue. Okay, so we can play on Colinas, we can play on Kapalua, or we can play on New Pebble. I'm gonna guess that the latter is Pebble Beach in California. Kapalua sounds Hawaiian, and I don't know what Colinas is. Uh, sure, New Pebble. Let's do Pebble Beach. Why not? Pebble Beach is supposed to be a nice golf course. It's called Tough Pebble. Hmm. Yes, Tough Pebbles are, uh, are tough sometimes. Okay, uh, New Game Resume. Yeah, N for New Game. Enter them are players in your group. So here, theoretically, if you, uh, if you don't have any friends, you can imagine you have friends by pressing 4. Or 3, or at least 2, maybe. But I'll just go ahead and press 1. All right. Enter three initials and press enter when done. Uh, I guess I'll say LBT for late light. Okay. Oh, we can pick between the pro tees or the regular tees. Uh, I am not a pro, but I'll, I'll go ahead and um, get the, the real golf experience by pressing P for pro tees. Oh, yeah, I got to do E for expert. I'm probably going to end up regretting that, but uh, sure, let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's press space bar to continue. Practice, see, practice, good. Um, let's just go ahead and, you know what, for this video, I, I'm not going to play through a whole course. I'd love to, but I think uh, I think that would take too much time because I want, actually want to look at several games in this video, and I think playing a whole course in each game would take too long. So rather than actually going through the whole kind of course, which is sort of like the golf game equivalent of campaign mode in other DOS games, let's just practice some holes. So I'll say practice a hole, enter number of hole. I don't know, let's start with hole one, I guess. All right, hole one. It's a par four. Uh, those numbers on the right, I believe, are how many yards you have to hit, uh, the, the distance from the tee to the pin in yards. And I, I like the artwork here. I like this early sort of EGA flower artwork that they've... I mean, it's just window dressing, but I like how they've decked it out there to have those flowers growing at the bottom of the sign. Okay, press space bar, and here we go. This is mean 18. Now, one thing I'd like to show right away is this is what happens if you press the left arrow key you get full 360 degree 3D panning. Now, it's not great. The graphics are definitely 
you know, the product of the 1980s. But how many games really let you look at a landscape like this in 380 degrees and pan left and right like that at the time? There weren't that many, I don't think. Um, one thing that this game also does, which uh, takes them getting used to, is what it does with perspective. So if you look at the... I don't really know how to describe it because I'm, I'm not a I'm not an artist, so I don't understand things like perspective and lines of um, uh, you know l lines of distance and whatever you call them, whatever you fancy artsy painter drawery people call them. But but basically, um, as something approaches the horizon, it sort of flattens out to a line. What I mean is that if you're looking at something in real life. The things that are close to you occupy most of your field of vision, and the things that are far away from you form just a, a relatively narrow band of the, the landscape that approaches the horizon. Uh, this game tries to deal with that problem by kind of stretching out the distance. What that means is it, it looks kind of like everything is curving up. It, it creates a weird effect where it looks almost like the landscape is, is curving up towards the top of the screen. That's done on purpose. That's done so you can see more of the landscape so everything doesn't flatten out to a line as it hits the horizon. Um, it takes some getting used to, but it, it's, it, I, I think it looks good. I think, I think they did a good, good job with it, uh, and I think it definitely makes sense because in some of the other, some of the other golf games, we'll see you know, the, the, the whole area, like when you shoot the ball far away, the whole area where you see the ball flying is like three pixels high or something like that, so it's a little ridiculous. Anyway, this was also a game which pioneered, um, I don't know if this was the first game to have such a, a gauge, but this is uh, certainly one of the games that popularized this method of, uh, of goal stroke. See that thing uh, on, the, uh, on the side? See the thing on the left-hand side there, that bar? Um, that represents your, um, that's basically how you'll do your swing. So I think you use space bar in this game. Yeah, uh, that was not a particularly brilliant... Oh, great. My shot went in the water. You take a one-stroke penalty, you must replay or drop ball. Okay. Um, move ball back or move ball forward. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, D to drop. Okay. Okay, so I'll drop the ball here in front of the water that I landed the ball in. And I don't know... How, do you have to aim? Like, is, is the arrow key... Are the arrow keys actually how you aim in this game? I don't know. Anyway, uh, okay, let's try this again. So, um, for some reason, I tr so if you've never played a PC golf game, I'll try to explain how this type of um, swing gauge worked. Basically, what you would do is you'd, you'd click a button or press a button to start the swing. The, uh, the gauge starts to move upwards, and that represents how much power your shot should have. And you press the same button a second time when the bar reaches the desired amount of power. So obviously more power means the ball gets hit farther. And then you press the button a third time at some point um, to set how much angle the ball has. If you hit the button too early, the ball will angle off to the left. If you hit the button too late, the ball will angle off to the right. Uh, and if you get it right in the in the sweet spot, then the ball should go pretty straight. So I think here, um, the part where you want to hit the button the third time is right where that blue bar begins at the bottom of the, the swing gauge. So let me go ahead and do this. So I'll go ahead and do that. And there we go. That went pretty well. Ball still curved a little bit. Oh, come on. Really? Man, this ball is just like magnetically drawn to the to the water. Crazy. All right, so here we go. So, um... So we're here now. It would be nice if I could see how close I... Oh, distance 71. I was going to say it would be nice if it showed me how far I am to the to the pin, but it does. Distance 71 yards. Uh, it's automatically selected the pitching wedge club for me, which is nice. I think it is also possible in this game to choose your clubs. Let me see if I... Oh, yeah, up and down arrows increase and decrease club. Okay. Oh, and OC's overhead view. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's see. What is the overhead view? Oh, it's just this. Oh, it shows how my swings went. That's nice. It shows it shows where my swings landed. That's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, you can use up and down arrows to change your clubs. So like you can go through the irons all the way from the two iron to the nine iron, and then the woods. Um, okay, I seem to only have a three wood and a four wood, but uh, there are other woods as well. And then the pitching wedge. Okay, I guess those are the, those are the clubs I have. So... Let's see. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any way to aim. Uh, later golf games would let you aim with the mouse and kind of give you an idea of how hard you need to hit with uh, with the club, but I have no idea how hard I need to hit, so I'll just go ahead and... It's 
probably gonna oh I was gonna say that's probably gonna overshoot but actually it didn't overshoot as badly as I thought it it did overshoot but I thought it would, I thought it would overshoot more than that for some reason okay um it's a bad position because we're only 21 um I really have no idea how how high the problem here is I don't want to let the bar go all the way to the top to the red zone because that's gonna way overshoot the hole at this point uh, but I don't know there's probably some way of calculating how you're supposed to like like how far you're supposed to let the bar go I just never bothered to figure out how to calculate that so let's try and wing it yeah that was that's still overshot okay here we go so we're on the green so, uh, so here you aim by using up and down arrows to make that black line go towards the, uh, towards the hole. And I'm pretty far away. I'm 34 feet away from the, uh, that is a long putt. I'm going to aim slightly downward because those arrows pointing to the upper left indicate that the ball is going to kind of get, I think that indicates a hill, like there's a hill here on the green or a, s a slope. So let's see how far do, I, uh, um, I'm guessing that each rectangle in the swing bar on the left corresponds to 10 feet of putt, but that is just a guess. I do not know that for a fact. So I'm going to go ahead and take four. Um, you know, it seems like it was pretty accurate, actually. It wasn't actually too bad. All right, so I'm now only five feet away, so let's just do like like that. There we go. Nice putt. All right. Nice. I uh, I took a quadruple bogey, but considering that I have no idea how to play this game, I think that's uh, honestly not too bad in my opinion. Okay, practice a hole. Let's practice hole number two, and then I think... Uh, oh, this is a par five. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and... Okay, here, so here we're the driver. Can I choose a different club? Yes, I can. So I can actually... Okay, so I have the same clubs as before, except now I can choose the driver as well. Okay. All right, let's knock this one out of the park, boys. Come on, let's go. Let's let's get wild and crazy. Yeah, I hooked that shot because I pushed the button a little too early. That's not too bad, though, I think. Yeah, okay, actually, it's... Actually, it's kind of bad. Um, all right, let's just go wild and crazy again. Why not? This tends to be how things always go for me when I play golf games on the computer. I always go swing really wild off the tee, and then I end up in the rough, and then somehow miraculously I save it at the end and manage to get onto the green in a ridiculous. Uh, in a, in a, I said ridiculous. I meant to say reasonable, but instead I said ridiculous, which is kind of the opposite of reasonable. Yeah, see, just like that. I, I mean, I, I hit ridiculously wild the first couple of times, and I ended up in the rough both times, and then somehow suddenly I managed to get onto the green. Uh, in regulation, as they say. I believe the technical golf term is you get on the green in regulation if you have two putts left um, before making par. What I mean is, since this is, uh, for example, since this is a par five hole, uh, I got into the green in three hits, which is good because that means I have two putts now to make par. So I'm about 18 feet away, so let's say two rectangles there on the swing, uh, swing gauge there. Oh, that was close. All right, this should be this should be easy. If I miss this one, then I'm going to uh, I'm going to say something very peeved now. So there we go, nice putt. Okay, so we got par on that one. Good. That that typically is how it goes for me. I, I'm usually fairly good at putting on these games, but for some reason I just can't swing. I always tend to hook or slice badly, and then I think I probably need to figure out how to tee off better but anyway anyway that's mean 18 i'd love to show you more of this but um i want to move on because like i said i have a lot of other games i want to uh, show so i'll go ahead and say quit yes quit please uh like quit yes play again no okay good moving on so that was mean 18 uh let's see what do we have next let's go ahead and um but um but um but um but um but um but um um Let's go ahead and look at Jack Nicklaus Golf. So how do you run this? Is it just golf? There we go. Oh, another Accolade game. Accolade and Jack Nicklaus Productions present. Jack Nicklaus is a, uh, a pro golfer. Hey, nice. Adlib music. Cool. Oh, yeah. 
jamming. Wow. This music is wonderful. Gosh, I'm loving this. Oh, yeah. All right, um, let's see, um, so yeah, I don't know what a skins game is, I think it's some kind of weird thing for, um, for, like, freaky hippie people who are not satisfied with regular golf, but of course I'll do stroke play with one player because that one player likes to stroke himself. Um, so, let's see, uh, can I select from club members? Oh, regrettably, the Niklaus Club currently has no members. Use the Create New Club Member option to be the first to join. <laughs> okay, um, can okay, I select from computer players? Oh boy, look at all these people here. Um, okay, you know what, forget it. Uh, I'll just go ahead. No, no, I didn't want to... No, 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 no. How can I... I don't get rid of... I actually want to get rid of... Uh... If I click on delete here, is that going to delete him from the roster? Or is it going to... Okay. Okay, I... Okay, fine. Um, okay, so we can play English, we can play Lorimar, or we can... Oh, hey, let's play Sherwood Forest with Robin, uh, Robin Hood. That'll... Uh... It's Sherwood Country Club, but still, it seems uh, seems pretty legit. Welcome to Sherwood Country Club. Set within beautiful canyons and featuring majestic ponds and waterfalls, Sherwood provides a unique golf experience. Oh boy, that's that is a nice looking course. Look at that. That is just a great uh, that is a great looking golf course, man. I'm liking this. Um, okay, so once again, I'll go ahead and just say uh, practice a hole. Should we practice? Type a number from 1 to 18. Sure, let's start from hole 1. A short but challenging first hole. This par 4 didn't let me finish reading it. Um, I think DOS box might be going a little too fast. Oh, you know what? Problem here is... Uh, Jack Nicklaus is a computer-controlled player, so I'm actually not playing golf here. Hold on, I need to... Uh, I need to... Uh, Get out. How do I exit this now? Is there a way to exit this without? Uh, uh, come on. Okay. Exit to DOS and try that again. Um, so this time I won't select from computer players. I will create a new club member. Name. Light, light. Male, female, um, sure, I'll remain a male, I guess. T, championship pro, men's ladies. Uh, let's say, let's say pro. Skill expert, yeah. I'm probably gonna regret this, but that's okay. Let's just remember pressing a key. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, done, all right. Let's go ahead and play Sherwood again. Let's, uh, let's try this again. Yes, it provides a unique golf experience. All right, let's go ahead and uh, practice a hole, hole number one. All right, there we go. Oh, I should have read that because I didn't finish reading the text the uh, the, uh, the last time, but oh well. All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. This is hole one of Sherwood. Wow, my golfer has a very awkward stance. Uh, maybe it's a normal golf stance, I guess. I don't know. Okay, uh, so let's see. I believe, let's see, how did how did this work? Uh, right, so so using the arrow, using the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard lets you um, move that aiming marker up there. That's where your golfer is aiming at. This line here is obviously the, um, the pin. And... Just as in the other game, uh, pressing pressing up and down uh, adjusts uh, the type of club that you have. So right now I have the driver, which is the longest club, and then these are the irons, which give you uh, less distance but greater uh, loft, and then pitching wedge sandwich, and finally the putter. Okay. Obviously, we want to use the driver since we want to. We're teeing off. We want to whack this ball out of the park. Um, aim. Um, 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 actually, can I? Can I see the hole somehow? Because I'd like to kind of see what it looks like. Here we go. Overhead view. 
Uh, so, okay, I'm here, I guess. So I need to, um, kind of, yeah, so I have kind of a dog leg to the left, but I probably should, um, for the first shot, I should just go straight, I think. So not aim for the flag, which is off to the left, but just aim kind of, yeah, okay. So, all right, so let's aim. Yeah, I guess aiming there is okay, probably. So, okay, let's give this a try. How does, do I use space bar again on this one? Yes, I do. All right. Oh, that uh, didn't go too badly, actually. It's actually a decent first uh, first shot. 265 yards. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's okay. That's serviceable. Okay, nice. Uh, now, oh, and it. Um, 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 uh, I need to. Oh, you know, I don't have auto caddy on, so I have no idea. Can I turn it on? Uh, I have no idea. Oh, C quote. Here we go. This par four can be reached off the tee by the strong-hearted. Does that mean that, uh, what do you mean reached off the tee? You mean I can get the ball onto the, the green from the first shot? Maybe that's what it means, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea how far... See, I think the pitching wedge has a rated distance of something like 70 yards. Or we're thinking of the... Uh, Gosh, I'll use the pitching wedge. If I overshoot, then, uh... oh, well, yeah, that overshot. I think, okay, I think the pitching wedge has, yeah, the, sorry, the pitching wedge has a rated range of 100 yards. That's why the ball went 104 yards. Oh, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Um, okay, well, that means I can shoot again using the pitching wedge and just, uh, I'm going to assume that these, I think those rectangles are, again, I think those rectangles are like 10, 10 yards of distance for each. So let's just do like three rectangles. There we go. That wasn't, uh, I was going to say that wasn't too bad, but actually it was kind of bad. It was kind of bad, but okay. Oh, well. Can I aim with the mouse? Does clicking here do anything? Apparently not. Okay. All right. So here we go. We've got a, we've got a 13 foot putt, which is not great, but um, could be worse. Oh dear. Okay, well that that was kind of lame. But uh, all right, let's see this. Uh, what happens if I say tap in? Oh, is that like a gimme? Is that like when you're close enough, it'll let you just say tap in? Okay. All right, well that wasn't too bad. Uh, let's practice uh, a different hole. Let's practice hole number two. Two well-placed shots to tight target areas will leave a tricky approach over water. Oh boy, uh, I like making well-placed shots in tight areas. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, it's a par five. So again, yeah, we definitely want to just go straight here. We've got like maybe even two just straight out shots and then obviously it curves off to the right and there's a, oh boy, the hole is there on this little island here. These are always very nice looking holes where the, the green is situated in the middle of water, but it means it's really difficult to get there without getting the ball into the water. Oh, can I turn on the auto caddy here? Uh, what? Obviously. Huh? What? I mean, obviously I want to measure from where I am now to the pin or the hole, duh. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. So I think, yeah, straight out. Straight out is good. With the driver, do I need to configure anything? I don't think so. Let's just let it rip. Oh yeah. Oh, I hooked that one badly, which is why it went off to the left. Okay, it's oh, it's out of bounds. Ah, oh, darn it! I hate when that happens. Uh, okay, let's. Let's actually adjust that just a little bit, maybe. I need to, and I still hooked, and hit a tree. 211 yards, yeah. Dang it, that is bad. I yeah, I've already took taken three strokes now because uh, because of that out of bounds shot. That is bad. Uh, okay, I can't use the driver. Oh, I can still use the driver. Let's use the driver again because I'm still pretty far from the hole. 
And this time, all right, I, oh, I still hooked. I was actually, I was deliberately trying to hit late, and I still hooked. Wow. Okay. Um, 155 yards to the pin. I think I should probably, what's a good club here? Um, I don't remember the distances on these clubs. Um, use a seven iron, I guess, maybe, and go like, Oh dear, that could, yep. Uh, sure, I'll drop in front of the water and, oh, I can use the arrow keys to choose the, that's nice. Uh, sure, I'll choose from, can I drop here on that little, okay. Yeah, I, I actually did drop it on that path there. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's uh, go ahead and take a sand wedge and, um, I don't know, do something like this. Oh. oh okay. It looked better than it was. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, where's my grid now? Hold on, why am I, can I, can I? Putt? Okay, I didn't want to putt because I guess I'm kind of on the fringe of the green, but let's putt. Uh, I think this should be fairly doable. Well, if I don't slice the shot like I did. Sheesh. Okay, this, I don't know if I, if I need, uh, I think I'm... What? What? All right. Yeah, finally, exactly. My thoughts exactly. All right. Um, one more time. Let's see. Swirling wind coming from a hidden valley makes club selection difficult. Oh, boy. Oh, but it's a par three. Okay, let's let's do this par three real quick and then move on. Uh, how far am I from the hole? Um, 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 um. I should have I should have done some kind of range calculation because, oh, that's in the water. Oh. Okay, I, I stand corrected. It's out of bounds, probably. There's no way that's within bounds. Wait, is it actually in bounds? You expect me to hit from here? Okay. Okay, actually, it's it, it's, it, it actually isn't that bad, I think. It, 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 I thought it would be worse, but it's actually not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and hit the uh, with the sand wedge from here. And is that going to go on the green? Okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so technically we re technically we, we reached the green in regulation because actually no we didn't. Actually no we didn't. On a par three, hitting the green, reaching the green in regulation means getting onto the green with your first shot. So actually I'm already out of regulation, which means I have a thirty foot putt to make par on this. That is not going to happen. Uh, watch this fail. That uh, yeah. I don't see that went better than I thought it would, but um... what? Come on, man! Double bogey. Yeah. All right. 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 That was Jack Nicklaus uh, golf. Uh, not a bad game. I, I think I just need more practice on that one. But it, it's actually, you know, for all that, for all that, uh, that. Uh, for all the trouble I had with it, it's 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 a it's a decent enough game. All right, let's move on. Uh, so now we have a showing from the venerable Micro Pros. This is um, was there a batch file? For, yeah, greens. This is David Ledbetter's greens, the instructional 3D golf simulation. So let's see. Um, Micropro Simulation Software presents a production by The Thought Train and David Ledbetter. Woo! Oh, he hit the tree. Well done, sir. Oh, no, he gets, he gets some instruction from a guy who shows him how to wave his arms back and forth. Nice! Oh, yeah, look at that ball go. That ball is going great places. And he just got a hole in one. Yes, he did. All right. Oh, yeah, he's liking that. He is satisfied. That's a satisfied camper. 
All right, so here's a little bit of a bio about David Ledbetter, the pro's pro, regarded as the best golf instructor in the world. Wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty strong claim there, sir. All right, uh, let's move on. And do you want to use the joystick? No, I'm a civilized person. Uh, please enter. Oh, yeah, this uh, this game is not. Uh, 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 this copy is not uh, not cracked, so hold on. I need to um, find the copy protection codes. Uh, what do we have here? Page forty six, paragraph two, line three, word one. The word appears to be move. Let's try move. Ah, yes, I think it worked. Because if that was wrong, it would have asked for a, it would have asked again. Yes, move, because we like to move it, move it, as so often happens in the game of golf. There is a lot of movement involved in golf, theoretically, like that ball is moving. Okay, uh, okay, Donald Ross, memorial, course length, okay, that's the total course length, course par 72, course record, between someone named Mark, trophy holder Marcus Goody. Okay, nice. Okay, fine. Can I... Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, this is nice. I you know, I really like it when games have interfaces like this where, you know, there's like a, you know, a, a setting and you can click on different things to do things. Like here you can do putting practice, driving range, recorded plays. Here's how you exit back to DOS. Practice one hole. That's probably what I'll do. Modem play. This game even has the ability to play against another player by modem. How many games let you do that back in the DOS days? Courses, player statistics, trophies, game t game types. How many game types do we have? Um, yeah, let's do stroke play with one player. Da, 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 da. I think these with the telephone are the ones that let you play by modem. All right, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Player statistics. Player. Human. Okay. Nice. Let's see. Can we uh, look at our courses here? How many courses do we have? Oh, there are actually several. Um, um, I can say look. So if I click on a course and say look, it'll show me what the course looks like. That's nice. All right. Um, St. Augustine. St. Augustine is a famous golf course, isn't it? That seems like a good... Uh, that seems a good bet. Sure, let's take St. Augustine. Why not? And, uh... Oh, wow. Do you, it even switches the this uh, this picture so that you're like... Wow, this is really cool. Th this looks nice. I, again, I like it when games do stuff like this. It's just, it's just window dressing, but so much of golf is the beauty involved in it. I mean, golf is not a game that I ever played competitively. I wasn't really too concerned about how many strokes I got. It was really more just the, the feeling of being uh, at one with nature and really enjoying the, the whole, you know, the setting of being on the golf course. So... Uh, wow, this is, this is really... Oh, they even have like an old-fashioned telephone there on that, that shelf for modem play. Wow, this is really nice. I'm really, uh, really liking the looks of this. Anyway, um, so yeah, I can go begin around there. Where's the option here to quit to DOS? If indeed there is one. Oh, here we go, down here. Okay. All right, practice one hole. Sure, let's say pr uh, hole number uh, one. Can I click? Yeah, so, okay, hole one. It's a par four. All right. Uh, oh, oh, wait, do I? Really? How do I? Okay, how do I actually? Uh, hello? How do I actually hit the ball now? Uh, what? Okay. Um, this game appears to be glitching somewhat. Um, how do I? Okay. So, oh, I see. So I can click click around to to control where I'm looking. How do I swing? Um, okay, so here I can pick my club. Okay, one wood is fine. I guess that's this game's version of a driver. Um, how do I swing, man? 
can I? Okay, if you click with the right mouse button, you can see the pin. That's nice. But I, how do I? How do I? Uh, um, gosh. Okay. Um, how do I get out of here? Actually, how do I? How do I do anything? I, I, I seriously can't like do anything because. Okay, there we go. Clicking up there appears to have gotten me out of there. Um, gosh, that's a shame. Because this, this looks like a really nice game. I mean, like I said, the whole setup here is really nice, but then somehow the graphics start glitching when you get onto the course. Um, I'm going to actually quit out of this just so that it, I don't get stuck somewhere again. Um, gosh, that's that's disappointing because this was uh, this is actually a pretty nice looking game. I here are some other... Uh, Microprose games, World Circuit, a racing game, Jump Jet, I played that because I played pretty much every DOS flight sim ever made. ATAC, also a flight sim, also a good game. Oh, and The Legacy, Crowley 9 actually did a Let's Play of The Legacy, which is kind of a, a horror, a first person horror RPG along the lines of Dungeon Master and things like that. Um, goodbye from Microprose, Microprose Golf. Um, I'll have to look at that again and see if I can get that running properly because it looked like an interesting game, but uh, gosh, with those... Uh, with those glitches, uh, that's that's unfortunate. Hmm. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I have just a couple of other games that I wanted to show uh, in this video, so let's go ahead and get to those. Um, the first is Lynx 386 Pro. Now, this game here, I'll go ahead and run it. Yeah. Lynx 386 Pro. This was the golf game of the DOS era. If you know any golf game from the DOS era, it's probably this one. This was the most coveted, most respected, most revered DOS game, uh, DOS golf game of the, yeah, of the DOS era. Um, for several reasons. I mean, it basically, it got everything right. This was the game that really just, just got everything, uh, got everything right. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll just say practice. Um, these are the default golfers that come with, uh, yeah, I'll say, let's say create new golfer. Here we go. Golfer name is uh, Light Blight. Okay. So, uh, auto grid on green. Yeah, let's do the grid everywhere. You don't really need it everywhere, but why not? Caddy, sure, why not? Chipping club, uh, I'll chip with the pitching wedge. The CC indicates your chipping club. Here you can choose what clubs you want to have. Um, I prefer the driver one to the driver two because I think the driver one goes farther. Driver one uh, gives you a flatter shot, which gives you more distance, which is obviously good when you're teeing off. Uh, woods, do I... Yeah, do I really... Yeah, actually, this is... It's actually not a bad initial setup. I mean, it might be nice to have another wood in... You know what? Let's do this. What am I going to use a two iron? Actually, I might, but yeah, forget it. Sure, level pro. Um, so basically, um, the level... If you choose an easier level, um, the ball will tend to divert less. So like if you hook or slice the ball, it will swing less off to the side. But you get something like 20%. I think amateur gives you 10% less distance and beginner gives you 20% less distance. So if you want the full distance, you've got to go pro. And then tee boxes, yeah, black are the farthest ones. That's for the pros. Uh, shirt color, you can even choose uh, your shirt color here. It doesn't really doesn't change anything about the game, but uh, sure, let's choose a, a shirt that's the color of the sky and say save. Nice. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and play with the late light and all these courses. Uh, I remember, uh, I remember back in the day, uh, I think you click on additional courses. Yeah, this is advertising for... Uh, Oh yeah, and you can sh you can convert courses from Lynx. So before Lynx 386 Pro, there was a game that was just called Lynx, and it was also a great DOS game. But Lynx 386 Pro is even better. It takes everything that was Lynx and makes it even better. So you could actually convert Lynx courses to uh, to Lynx 386 Pro courses. They were not as fancy, but uh, 
but still, well, Lynx was a great game, and this is also a great game. And yet, all these courses, I remember reading an article in Compute Magazine back in the 1990s about the process of making courses for this game, and it's all handmade. Like, they would actually send out a ground crew to these courses, and they would be there for a few days with video cameras, and they would just film everything. They would film the whole course, and then back in the in the programming studio, they would just recreate everything by hand and make all the details, all the graphics from hand for the entire golf course. It was just such a meticulous process, but um, wow. Let's see, Banff Springs, Barton Creek, man, all these famous golf courses. This game, because it was such a big name game and so well known and so famous, they got licensed to do all the great courses. They got Pebble Beach, they got Mauna Kea in Hawaii, Pinehurst Prairie Dunes, Valerie True North. Do they have... Uh... These do seem to be mostly American courses. I don't think they had some of the great uh, courses in England or Scotland or places like that. So these are American courses, but still... Pebble Beach, man. Yeah, let's do Pebble Beach. Um, let's do one hole from Pebble Beach and one from Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea is that mountain in Hawaii. Wow, awesome. Okay, so let's do a hole of Pebble Beach. A uh, la Mulligan's, a Sure, why not? A mulligan is basically when you take a second shot because you didn't like your first shot. And a gimme is if your ball is within, I think, two inches of the cup, you can claim that as getting it in the hole even if it didn't get in the hole. Wind, sure, in the middle, normal greens. Yeah, sure, really hard greens, normal. Uh, oh, this is set up to use the split screen. So here you're already seeing something cool that, that Lynx lets you do. It lets you configure all these screens here. So here you can see, obviously, this is the main window. Then you can see uh, the ball coming to the to the pin from, from you know far away. And then here's an overhead view. And I think if we go to setup here... Uh, oh, wrong, wrong window. This, is, this sets up the golfer stands, but that's not what I wanted to do. Where's the, uh, is it here in menu? It's probably here in menu, and then, um, yeah, display. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Display options, right? So here you can choose something like, um, you can choose, for example, a quarter screen, and then you can say, yeah, you can configure it so that this corner is... Oh, wow, this actually lets you see the club distance chart. That's useful because um, in the other games I had the problem that I couldn't see where, um, I couldn't see how far each club would hit the ball. But actually, you don't need to use that in this game because in this game, if you go to the club menu here, mousing over the clubs here will show you the rated distance of each club. So you can see the loft wedge goes 70 yards, the sandwich goes 90 yards, the pitching wedge goes 120, and so on, all the way up to the first driver, which can actually do a whopping 275 yards if you use it properly. Um, and that's just in-air distance. The ball can even roll farther than that once it hits the ground. Uh, so... That's cool. Yeah, I mean, we could we could play around with the, the setup here and do different views and different screens here with these different windows, but let's just go ahead and shoot. Um, this game does not simulate the black tee boxes, which is why I'm shooting from the blue ones, even though I chose to shoot from the black ones in the golfer setup, but that's okay. So here you can use the left mouse button to choose where you want to hit. Click the right mouse button to keep that um, aiming marker on. And let's see, this, if you click on this, it lets you see where the where the pin is, so it's way off there to the right, so I'll go ahead and shoot straight for the first shot, and then we can go, you know, angle off to the, that's, eh, maybe, yeah, can I, can I do that? I, yeah, 263 yards, theoretically, I could actually hit that far. If you click on the profile here, you can actually see, you know, the, the slope of the land between where you're hitting and where the pin is. Um, yeah, you can choose a draw fade chip, um... Yeah, man, there's there's so much stuff in this game. I mean, I could spend a while explaining all the different things in this game, but let's go ahead and just... Yeah, so here you swim with the mouse. In the previous games, I was usually swinging with the uh, with the space bar, but here you actually swim... Uh, swim. Swing with the mouse. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and yeah, you, you hold the mouse button. You don't tap the mouse button. You hold the mouse button for the uh, for the it's initial the charge rough. up. And then you click for the, uh, for the snap. Uh, okay, so I hit into the rough, but like I said, that is typical for me. I usually hit into the rough because... I just, I get so wild with my swings, and then, um, and then somehow I usually manage to save it after that. So let's go ahead and, I think rough reduces the shot distance by what, like 20%? So is hitting with the driver here still, you can still hit with the driver here even when you're not on the tee. Do I want to do that though? Let's be wild and crazy and go for it. Where's the pin? pin is, okay, pin is back there. So actually the aiming marker was already in a good spot. Let's, oh, actually, you know what? 
Let me hit with an iron because I want to I want to give the ball a little bit more loft and try to get over these trees. I don't know if I'm going to be successful with that, but uh, oh, looks like it actually worked. Oh, oh wow! Look it's in at, the rough. Look at that. That actually okay. Well, that hmm. this is a par four, so I did not hit the green in regulation. That's kind of annoying, but uh, oh well. Uh, let's. See. See, do I want to hit with the loft wedge here? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and hit with the loft wedge. Why not? All right. That, mm, that could have been better, but oh well. Now, as usual, I've got a ridiculous putt here. I have a 42 foot putt. What are the chances of me making this? All right, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Well, now I'm 10 feet away from the hole. Looks like it's pretty, yeah, pretty flat green. Hold on, profile. Oh, it actually goes down a bit. Oh, the pin is actually six inches below the ball. Okay. So, eh, like that, and then like that. All right. So I got a bogey, but they're applauding me because a 10-foot putt is nothing to sneeze at. That 10-foot putt w w warranted at least a little applause, even though it wasn't, um, you know, uh, I... Obviously, it got a bogey, so not not very good. But anyway, okay. So that was the first hole of Pebble Beach. Let's go ahead and go to Mauna Kea and play the first hole of that. And yeah, you can see this is a very Hawaiian setting. Palm trees. Yeah, you've got the mountains in the background. Oh man, this is great stuff, man. This this is just this is beautiful. Oh, can't spot pins off. So the pin's actually off the screen. Oh, I've got a massive dog leg to the right here. So I, okay, so I need to go straight for the first shot and then angle off to the right. That's fine. So that is two, huh, 200 yards away. So if I want to get really wild and crazy, I could theoretically aim for that spot. And as long as I don't land in the rough in between, I could theoretically save myself some distance. Do I want to do that? You only live once. Let's, let's be wild and crazy. Oh, wow. Got a hold of that one. Oh, yeah. And, oh, that went way too far. It's in the rough. That you can, actually, you can actually, I don't know if you saw it up here, actually. I actually saw the ball fly way over here and then land in the rough back there. So, actually, I way overshot that one. At least there's no tree in the way this time. So, theoretically, I could still salvage this. Yeah, I'm hitting with a 7-iron, so, yeah. So, 7-iron is rated for 160 yards with that minus 20 because I'm in the rough, or maybe maybe rough is only minus 10. I don't know, something like that still. Okay, so I shouldn't I shouldn't go into the red with this one because I don't want to overshoot, but so, uh, I still went slightly into the red, but... Be the club! How are we doing here? Uh, that, oh, that's actually not too bad. Oh, nice shot. Thank you, sir. All right, nice. Okay, so we actually got into the green in regulation. Great. So the pin is one inch below the ball. I wouldn't have known that from looking at this. It actually looks like I'm going uphill here slightly, but... It's fairly flat, I think, so... Okay, let's see. Can we do this? Can we get a birdie? Oh, I think that... You know, ah! Duh! Yeah, this green is... This green is somewhat angled. All right. Good save. Good save. I got a par. I guess that's not nothing to sneeze at, considering I haven't played this game very much in the last 20 years. All right, let's let's just. Uh, I like this Mauna Kea setting so much. Let's let's try the second hole just to see what it's like. Is this another? Uh, this is another dog leg. In fact, this is two dog legs. It goes like this, and then like that, and then like this. Wow, these these holes are crazy, man. Where's the pin? Pin is way back there. But I don't think I want to shoot directly for the pin. Uh, in fact, what do I? Hold on. How far? How far is? Uh, hold on. How far is that? Oh, actually, you know what? I guess I do want to, I guess I do want to shoot. Okay. Um, I've got a wind coming from the right, so I'm, eh, eh, mm, eh, eh, mm. Oh dear. Oh dear. What's happened? Oh, 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 it actually, oh, that actually went up pretty well. That'll play. Oh, wow, 324 yards. Wow, crazy stuff, man, a 324-yard drive. That is a nice drive. Um, Yeah, wow, look at this. We're actually we're only 67 yards from the hole. That's actually a pretty good, uh, 
That was a lucky, uh, lucky drive that actually went out pretty well. Turned out better than I expected. Everything went better than expected. All right, so loft wedge goes 70 yards. So this, yeah, this should be okay. I'm, I'm aiming a little to the right because of the wind from the right. Um, uh, like that. Uh, oh, 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 oh dear. Oh, oh dear. I, I sliced that one. Uh, okay, now, now I've got a chip. Unfortunately, chipping changes the um, the distances of the clubs, and I really don't know how the distances work here. Uh, pins above the ball. I have a feeling this is going to go badly. Yeah. Oh, wow. That. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was disastrous. That was insane. That was terrible. Be the club. Great shot. Wow. 14 inches from the hole. All that and I still got a bogey. Wow. See what I mean? I tend to I tend to get do like ridiculous things at the beginning and then somehow I just manage to save at the end. It's always how things go. Anyway, I could spend a lot more time in this game and show you all the cool features that this game has, but uh, let's move on to the final game of this video. Uh, that was Link's 3 to 6 Pro. Great game. Um, game that I was very enthusiastic about as a child. I played this game a lot as a kid. Uh, I haven't played that played it that much in my adult life, but you can see it's a it's a fantastic game. It really has a lot going for it. But anyway, the last game that I wanted to show you all was PGA 46. Um, and this is actually I just copied the CD, uh, but I think if you go into the golf directory, there's um, yeah, let's just run PGA 46 here. Now, I know some of you may not have particularly uh, positive ideas about Electronic Arts, EA, but this is a good game, really. PJ Tour Golf 46. It's a good game. You can say about the game. Okay, this is about the game. Uh, wait, did I? Sound and music Rob Hubbard. Really? The, the Rob Hubbard? He actually made the music for this game? That's pretty cool. That's some uh, that's some star power there. Um, okay, anyway. So. Oh, that's nice. Little, uh, little gentle guitar music. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice music. This is... This is exactly the kind of music that middle-class 60-year-old guys listen to when they uh, when they go to play golf, when they watch videos about how to get money on your investments. Okay, um, I'll just say practice a hole, and I think we have three courses to choose from. So this is the TPC at Summerlin in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the TPC at River Highlands in Cromwell, Connecticut. And this is uh, Sawgrass in Pontevedra, Florida. Um, do I want to be really retired and play in Florida or, or Vegas? These are all like places where... Okay, this is like the, the least retiree place of the three, so let's go ahead and try this. Not that there's anything wrong with being a retiree, but I, d I don't want to feel that old quite yet. Okay, so we can select a hole. There are 18 holes in this course, I believe. So let's start with a, yeah, par four. Sure, nice middle of the road par four. A huge drive will set you up for a medium iron to the green. You'll need to carry the last two sand bunkers in front of the green on your approach to lay safe. So yeah, so we've got a pretty straight shot out until we hit, yeah, so here we've got a couple of sand traps, but it's uh, not, not too bad, I think. Seems pretty reasonable, okay. So, here's the thing that I hate about this game. The swing meter is angled like that. It really annoys me. It really just... Everything else about this game is pretty good. Um, is this game as good as Link's 3 6 Pro? That's an interesting question. It... Uh, you can definitely see, I think you can tell already by looking at it, it kind of does that AAA game thing. This is like... The, this is a AAA golf treatment where you know, the graphics are really good, the production values are top-notch, everything looks and sounds great, but um, it just... Uh, whoa, what happened with the view? I was trying to... 
Try turn the view around, and it did not did not work out. Um. Oh. Wait, what? Okay. I think. Uh, I think. I think. Okay. What happened was I pressed space. Um. Amusingly enough, that was actually not a bad first shot. I didn't even intend to hit the ball, but um, yeah, the ball actually landed on the fairway just just short of the rough. So that, that's actually 213 yards. That's not a bad first drive. It's not great, but I'll take it. Technically, I could click on Mulligan and redo my first drive, but I'll, I'll take it because I'm probably not likely to... If I deliberately try to shoot, I'm probably going to do worse than that. So yeah, like I was saying, like I was saying, this is the typical sort of AAA treatment of a game. It looks great, sounds great, very high production values, but they just neglected a few things in terms of the gameplay. First of all, you don't have nearly the the level of control over the split screen that you had in Link's 3 to 6. You remember in Link's 3 to 6, you'd have like a quarter screen with four different panels here. So you see like your golfer here and the hole here and the overhead view here and something else here. Yeah, you don't have that here. You can look at the overhead view, which is nice. I mean, yeah, you can see... This is, yeah, I mean, I think the, the red spot is where we are, and that's the, the pin there. So, great. You know, that's 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 nice, but no, I don't want to aim there. I just want to get rid of the, the overhead shot. Um, I mean, but okay, fine. I'm willing to... Uh, I'm willing to overlook that, because that's something that only, only Lynx really did. There was no other game that did that. But um, the fact that the swing meter which is the main way that you interact with the game, is not straight, but it's kind of angled like this. It just really messes me up every single time. It's like, ah, oh, it just, the perspective just is so weird, man. Okay, so I'm gonna press space bar, and space again, and space again. Oh, and I hooked that shot. You can see, I think it's pretty apparent that this game borrowed a lot from Lynx, like in terms of its interface and its appearance, it really took a lot from Lynx. Um, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, Lynx is a great game. And this is a good game, too. I mean, I like this game. It's just, ah, oh, it's just so infuriating the way it, uh, just a couple of things about it are so infuriating, especially the swing meter. One thing I do like about the swing meter, though, is when you aim, see how it actually, there's that little sort of notch on the swing meter that moves around? It automatically adjusts how hard you hit and where it shows you where you want to be on the swing meter. So now when I press space bar, I want to tap when, yeah, like that. That was good, except I hooked. So the power level was good. I hooked to the shot, but the power level was, oh, I really hooked, wow. Wow, I really hooked that shot bad. Holy smokes, that, okay, that was terrible. Wow, this game really He's exaggerates. Going for par here. He's going for par here, yeah. Can I, uh, hold on, can I get the grid on, please? Also, the game's kind of slow. Oh, this gr this green is actually pretty flat. Okay, fine, so let's... Eh, it should be pretty straight in then. Uh, so, yeah, press space there. Oh, that looks good. That looks pretty good. Oh, is it, is it actually... Yeah, see... You see what I mean? This is this is what happens to me every time. Off the tee, I hook or slice this shot so wildly that it ends up 200 miles, or kilometers if you prefer, or actually yards, I guess, whatever, in, in the rough, like way in the forest. And then with my, with my second shot, I end up in a sand trap, and then somehow I manage to chip onto the green, and then I make a 38-foot putt to get par. This is how it happens to me every time. I swear, like, not every single time, but usually that's how it happens to me. Like, I, 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 I my drive is a disaster. And, okay, slight dog with left can play short as it ascends uphill to a kidney-shaped green. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, you can just look at the map and see that, yeah, it curves to the left, and then you've got a green there, sure. Okay. <sighs> Insane. It just, it happens that way every time. I can't believe it. Uh, do I want to change? The, no, I'm not going to mess with it. Let's let's just hit the ball. Oh, that was good. That was a good snap. 
For once, I did not hook or slice. That was well done. That was a good drive. Only 198 yards? Really? I feel like it should have gone farther than that. I feel like that should have gone farther than that, but in general, my driving distances in this game are less than in Lynx. In Lynx, you saw I could hit the ball over 300 yards, but here, if I can get it, if I can, if I can get to like 250 yards with one with my drive, that's pretty good. I don't know why. Anyway, okay, let's see if we can do another good shot here. Oh, good shot, good shot, good shot. Nice. Why are you going off to the left? Why are you going to the left, you dumb ball? I did not hook you. I did not hook that shot that badly. Okay. On the green, on the green. Let's do this. This extremely long putt should hold pretty straight. Yeah, it is an extremely long putt. Well, this is 28 feet, which is not as long as that like 40 foot putt that I just made. Um, so that voice will tell you if the if the putt should uh, curve to the left or right, like if it should hang left or right because of the slope of the green. But he said here it should go pretty straight because this is a straight green. So, all right, let's do this. Can we do it again? Can we can we make a 28 foot putt? That was okay. That was okay. All right, is this going to work? Is it going to go in? Oh, just barely. That was close, just barely. I almost had it. This to save par. Yeah, this is this is to save par, but I mean, it's only a it's only a uh, seventeen inch putt. So if I miss this, I'm going to be very cross. All right, all right, it went in. All right. That was PGA Tour Pro 486, I believe. Kind of like the next step up from Lynx Pro 386. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Golf Games in DOS. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, let me know what you thought. I'd be curious to see your feedback. I had a lot of fun with this. I think you can tell I'm a big golf fan. I love all of these games. Like, seriously, every single one of these games um, is... Uh, is personally meaningful to me. Obviously, Lynx is the one that I spent the most time with in my life. Uh, I spent way more time with that game than any of the others in this in this video. But all these games are great. I like all these games in their own way. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses and their own little quirks. And, and, and they're all kind of works of art in their own way. I mean, a, a, a computer game is a work of art. And games like this are definitely... They're as much works of art as they are works of engineering and precision and programming and stuff like that. So, you know, there's there's a lot that goes into games like this, and I really enjoy spending time with them. As uh, Again, I hope that you folks have enjoyed spending time with me in this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see more of uh, DOS games doing stuff in future videos. Until then, ta-ta, everyone. Bye-bye.